Hey guys, this is going to be a, a two-parter. Um, so, the first part is going to be mostly about this guy right here. It's called a Stain Gauge 2. Um, the second part is going to be um, something that I found out while driving with this thing. Um, so, to get back to the first part, um, this is called, like I said, it's called a Stain Gauge 2. It is a code reader and also it is extra gauges so it goes by your obd2 port so it plugs in you can, it has two ports one on the side one on the back um for the ethernet cable for this side so it gives you more options for uh uh you know location to put in it i always put them up here i've had three of these i have two right now but um i have three i've had three total so um these things here they go they plug in obd2 port so it's right here it's, it's always plugged in uh, to read the gauges. It basically reads uh, like the sensors that your car already reads, um, but it doesn't give you a display. So for instance, I mean, I already have a water temp gauge up here. Um, it's just lines though, high and low with lines. And this is telling me that it's 181 right now. And normally it's a little bit, I, I just drove like a mile and a half. Um, so normally it's a little bit higher than this. It's like a little bit higher than the mid, and it's and it usually goes to like 202-ish. So anyway, um, right now, um, just from my trip over, um, my average miles per gallon was 2.1. So instant is zero. So this is I'm going to get back to this one. This is the air intake temperature. That's uh, 53 degrees Fahrenheit. It is 44 outside, and it's been sitting. So as I'm doing this video, you'll see this climb. Um, so anyway. Uh, you hit, you can hit any of these buttons. Like the, you can display four gauges at a time. By the way, they do not sponsor me. I just um, I have bought these uh, with my own money, and they are really helpful if you have a vehicle that's um, from 1997 and up, um, maybe like older, higher miles that you want to know a little bit more what's you know about what's going on. So. Um, if you did a check engine light, you can scan it right then and there. Um, you hit this red button for the menu, and then you just hit the scan over here. You just, I don't, I'm not going to do it because I don't have anything, but you just hit scan, it'll tell you no codes, or it'll tell you codes. Um, and then, so this trip, I can't remember what this does. Oh, so there's a performance, you can do like 0 to 60 and stuff like that, which I have never done on this. I, I have gone through this already, and I know what it says. Um, this car is a 2006 Monte Carlo with a 3.9 liter V6. Um, it literally has a speed limiter at 113. It, it, it even comes up on here saying, like on here saying speed limiter 113. Uh, so when I hit this, you're gonna see some numbers. So this monitor, sorry, it's data. So this is supposedly data. Um, it took me zero feet to hit 158 miles an hour in zero seconds. So that's why I'm saying it's like not right. Um, and 46 feet to hit 122 in 0.2 seconds. So it just, there's all these things. Um, but anyway, so you can do, you can also keep track of your gas. Um, so you hit fill up. So right now, I'm gonna hit this. Uh, so far, the, this thing here thinks I have used 1.1 gallons in gas since I filled up. Um, the 6.1% is basically like from the time that, um, when you first put it in, you have to put in your engine size and your tank size and it will um like it'll calculate it so if it's wrong say for instance this one was actually wrong but it was lower than what i actually put in so i put it up 6.1 percent you put in like whatever you put in i put in like say if i go to the gas station right now and i put in 1.5 gallons i would bump this up so it says 1.5 and then hit done it also has you put in the gas price that you paid so that keeps track of what it was the last time you got gas you can look at it um it's also um it'll it ties into some of the other stuff so i'm gonna go back because i don't want to hit i don't want to actually say that i filled up because i didn't and it messed stuff up um so then gauges right now my water temp is 193 like i said i'm idling there's that going up already um so there it does water temp um, if you have two of the same thing on these gauges, it, one of them will usually be blank. So if I have water temp on both, it'll be blank. Um, so that's water temp. Average, like I said, well, okay, it's not blank this time. Um, trip fuel cost. So, so far, since I have started my car today, I have used a dollar in gas based on what I paid for it when I filled up. Um, 
and that'll just go up. I mean, in a few seconds, it'll probably hit 1.01. It'll just be a dollar one. Um, so anyway, uh, you can have this update. Horsepower is an estimate. You can have this update. Um, I think it's every half second, second or two seconds. It doesn't matter. I do it every half second because it's not like it's not like it's using any more energy, so it doesn't matter. Um, CPM, I can't remember. There's a voltmeter. Uh, air intake temperature on there too. Fuel pressure is only on like available on some vehicles. I believe it was Subarus or something like that that it said. Um, gallons per hour. Uh, ignition, I can't remember what the number means. Same with LOD, I can't remember. Closed loop and open loop, it'll tell you. Uh, manifold pressure, uh, this is also nice because if you have a boosted vehicle like supercharged or turbocharged, you can change this in the settings to read boost instead of the manifold, uh, manifold pressure. It'll actually read your PSI. Uh, there's instant miles per gallon. Miles per hour, um, again, it's verified, like, I mean, sorry, it's, it's your sensors telling this so if your speedometer says you're going 60 this should still say you're going 60 unless the needle is off somehow um, so if your speedometer is fluctuating um, because the, the actual gauge is broken then this would tell you this should tell you the right speed if it's not the sensor that's broken same thing with the tachometer um, 750 735 it's about the same um, this car does have a weird idle since I bought it it's kind of up and down a little bit so anyway uh, RPMs Throttle position sensor is not very accurate if you have a drive-by wire or electronic throttle control, so this is like AKA. Um, so uh, if you have a, a cable, like a throttle cable, like the older style, this should be more accurate. I have never had these on one of them, so I don't know, but I'm not using 23% of my throttle right now just to keep it idling. So um, it does go up and down, but it's wrong. So. Um, if I floor it, it says I have like 70% or something like that, so it's, it's just wrong. Um, and then back to water temp. So the other things you can do, uh, let's see, you can go more, and then you can go to display. You can have a brighter background, or no light, or low. Low is perfect for everything. You can see it, I and mean, you can see it's a nice, bright, it's not bright, it's cloudy, but it's, even on sunny days, that is easily visible. Um, without the high lamp and at night the high lamp is too much um so then you go you can go to uh the color you can change the color of it which is kind of nice um you can kind of match it to any color that, that you want like if your car has like red gauges you can match that to red which is nice um you can supposedly also do custom colors i don't know how to do that it's in here somewhere um oh there's custom color right there um and you can change stuff but uh let's see there's back to the lamp um, so the other part is the setup. When you first get it, you have to hit the setup. Distance is miles, or if you're in Canada, you got kilometers. Um, same thing with fuel units. You can change it from gallons to liters. Temp, Fahrenheit to Celsius. PSI, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think it goes to bar, no, inch pounds. <coughs> and then, I can't remember what KP is. But you have a few options. And then your engine size. So this is a 3.9 liter. Um, the, so I'm gonna get back to this in a second. So, and then your tank size. This is 16.5. They say to round down. I'm pretty sure. Um, so I did 16. Um, but fuel type, gas, currency, dollars, and then advanced settings. I don't even want to mess with. But going back to the engine size. So these things, I can take this out of my car right now, and I can put it into my Dodge Ram. If I wanted to, yes, there's rust on there. It's This is Ohio, so yeah, rust happens. Um, anyway, so I can take this device and I can plug it into that truck and it'll work. The problem is, is like, I mean, you can do it left and right. You can also get um, another cable for these. You can you can buy another cable. Um, it has to be from Standage because you have to have the OBD2 port and the ethernet on the other end. So they're not much, like 15, 20 bucks, I think. Um, and this is actually, I mean, it runs down through here. It is coiled up a few times underneath here. It's coiled up a few times in here before it comes out. So there's still room, you know, I could have this one over there in the corner if I wanted to. Um, so anyway, um, the engine size, you have to set this at the beginning. That's how it somewhat tries to figure out the uh, the gas, like how much gas you're using, because it's displacement um, for your cylinders. I mean, your pistons moving up and down. So it's the actual displacement that the air and the fuel have. So it's a lot more accurate for it to set it that way. So anyway, um, I can take this and put it into my truck. The problem is, is 
for one, the gas mileage will not be calibrated to this or, or to that. Um, I mean, it'll be calibrated to this until I change anything on that. So um, once I change the engine size to 4.7 liters for the truck, which is what it is, um, it will have to, like, you'll have to reset, you know, you'll have to drive and then fill up and then you have to tell it how much you put in. So it has to recalibrate again. It takes like two tanks. In the instruction manual, it says to take like two tanks. I, I pretty much change this uh, when I, um, when I fill up every time. I actually do change how much I paid and how much, uh, how accurate it is. If it's off by like 0.1 gallons, I don't mess with it, but um, pretty much it's pretty accurate now. I've been, I've been messing with it for, I've had this for like a year in here. Um, but so see, I mean, this is a 44 degree day and my air intake's at 80, 80 degrees. Um, so getting to that part, um, with this thing here, because you can see the air intake temperature, the, the thing I found out about this car, which it happens to a lot of vehicles, um, especially cars because everything's kind of packed in better, or I mean, I mean, uh, packed in a little bit too much. Um, this has the factory air intake from Chevy. Uh, it just has a K&N filter in it. It has the same location that it would draw air from, which is behind the uh, driver's side headlight. So um, the problem is, is I was driving this car it warmed up completely to like 200 degrees. I went to AutoZone, um, again, not a sponsor, just went to AutoZone, um, and was in there for like 15, 20 minutes. I came back out and it was on a 50 degree day, 5 zero, 50 um, degree day. And when I came out, this thing was reading that I was pulling in 130 degree air. And it stayed, it actually stayed, um, I drove it for 10 minutes through town. It's a 40, between 35 and 45 miles an hour. There is one spot that's 55 for a short time. Um, but I tried to do like a normal driving habit to do it. Um, and that's more leading to part two is the modification I did to try to help it. But anyway, um, so driving this car normally, um, it after 10 minutes, it dropped down to, like I said, it was, it was 50 degrees outside. It dropped down to... 73 degrees air intake temperature after 10 minutes that's what i was pulling in so 23 degrees above ambient temperature is not really that good um to be honest like that truck i don't have any issues there is no there, that has the factory air box has has a normal filter in it and that runs like two degrees above ambient like all the time if you're sitting yes it's going to heat up a little bit but the problem with this car is because the the way there's less room between the hood and the engine and, and the way everything's covered up. Um, it has, it basically the, the intake heat soaks. So with it holding the heat underneath the hood, it soaks into all the plastic parts and stuff. Um, to me, it, it makes sense a bit. I don't understand how air that's being pulled in at, you know, I'm not sure what the miles per hour is of uh, what the air is coming in the intake at, but I know it's not slow. I mean, it's not a hundred miles an hour or anything like that, I don't think, but. You know, it's not like five miles an hour. It's pulling in at a pretty decent rate. And for it to be pulling in cool air from outside, like say 44 degrees and have it be 91 degrees by the time it gets in there, doesn't make sense, especially while you're moving, doesn't make sense to me. Um, so uh, I get that it heat soaks and as you're pulling in the air, it's gonna be pulling off those plastics and stuff and maybe the sensor is heated up and even even though the sensor says it's 91, maybe the air is cooler, I don't know. But, um, it shouldn't be reading like that. Um, so with with this in mind, um, this is gonna lead to part two. I did a modification to this car that it doesn't fix the issue. Of course, while you're sitting, it doesn't change anything, but um, it helps a lot. So um, if you guys have any questions about this, you can get them at like AutoZone, like I said, not a sponsor. Um, you can get them online. They're about 150, which I mean seems pricey, but to know exactly what your car is doing, like I know I can I know exactly what my water temp is, I know exactly what my air intake temp temperature is, my voltmeter, I know exactly what that is. Some of the newer cars, I mean, they have it in your display. This has instant and average, like you can see average right there. Um, the reason that's different is because that's this car does it from the last time I hit you know reset it, which was thousands of miles ago, and this is since since I started it up last. Um, so with me idling and everything, I'm, it's dropped down to 1.6 since I started it. Um, so 
this air intake temperature is going to keep on going up and up as long as I'm running this, especially, and even if I shut it off because the the engine is hot. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that at, at the. This is gonna be the ending to part one. Um, I'm gonna tr I'm gonna do another video of this in the truck to kind of show you the difference. Uh, the, the truck does not have a um, doesn't have like I think it has my average, but not my instant. It's it's too old, um, but. If you guys have a car, especially an Impala, I mean, because this is basically a two-door Impala, it's a Monte Carlo, they are the same car, just different body panels, basically, and two extra doors on the Impala. Uh, same engine, same transmission, everything like that. Um, so, uh, with the Monte Carlo, the only year that you could get a 3.9 liter was 2006, and this is a 2006. Um, but... It's still, you know, it's still a good engine. It still works. But, so I, I'm going to leave this uh, at the end of the part one here. Uh, comment down below or if you have any questions about the stand gauge. Uh, you can, like I said, you can order them online. I actually got my second one. Look for sales. AutoZone had one on sale. That's why I bought my second one in the first place. Um, the first one, actually, I should add. I, I had an 03 Monte Carlo SS that I bought it with like 171,000 miles. It was a beater car. I mean, it was just for winter. Um, and it kept on, it gave me check engine lights and issues and this and that, and my gauges kept, kept on going in and out. So I bought one of these things, actually I bought this one to read everything. The problem was, is a lot of the issues were the sensors too. It was actually a complete electrical issue that the thing had. Um, so, but I was able to find out that my alternator was bad before it actually kind of went bad. I mean, it was kicking on and off, which I could see. So, um, I basically re replaced my alternator with a used one since I, didn't pay much for the car I wasn't going to pay a new alternator um and the it saved I mean the battery did eventually get hurt I, I put a new battery in it too because the battery the old battery died the new battery um got hurt by the alternator kicking on and off constantly um it killed like one of the cells in it or whatever so after like two or three more weeks it finally did die and it was it was giving me like lower voltage the whole time but it finally like died off so I got that replaced under the warranty of the battery um, so, um, anyway, it, it tells you, it tells you that you're going to have a problem if you can, if you catch it early enough on the gauges. Um, it's just more information for you to know what your car is doing and you can figure things out by yourself before a check engine light pops up or, you know, if, if, if your alternator is going bad or your battery is going bad, um, you'll start seeing it go up from like 14 volts down to like 11 or 12 because your battery should be 12. Um, if you have an old battery, it will drop down below 12. It'll be like 11. Um, so that's how you know that something isn't working right. Um, so that's how I was able to figure out. And I kept on seeing 14, 11, 14, 11. So I knew it was uh, fluctuating really bad. And uh, so I replaced it early. So anyway, um, like I said, like three times already, um, leave questions or comments in the, in the, uh, the comment section like and subscribe. I'm going to try to do a few videos. Um, this is during the coronavirus thing, so I'm just home uh, trying to uh, wait it out and, you know, get my business started. Uh, I'm also going to do another channel for my business. Uh, I am not technically ready, so I will, as, as I'm going, I will, uh, you know, I'll put that in there so you guys can check that out too. Um, but it's not going to be anything about cars. By the way, I am not a mechanic. Uh, I know, I know quite a bit about cars, but I, I don't repair them. So like, I, I know a lot of like specs, like horsepower and torque and torque a mile and all that crap. Um, basically if you read like a motor trend, I know that stuff. Um, so, uh, but to actually like replace stuff, I've, you know, I do my own oil changes and change air filters and I've done wheel bearings here and there, brakes, you know, stuff like that. But I haven't done anything like major. Um, so uh, I still take my cars to mechanics. I just had a power steering line go bad on it a couple, uh, a couple months ago, and it just looked like too much of a pain for me to bother with because it was through the wheel well and all that stuff. And uh, I thought I needed a new pump, which I didn't. But that also would have been, you know, I would have spent the money and replaced it and then still had a bad line, and I wouldn't have really known. Um, except for I would have seen it still leaking, but I wouldn't have known that my pump wasn't bad if I took it. You know, the mechanic put a new hose on it, and he's like, no, your pump's still good, so... You know, I wouldn't have known that. I would have spent 150 bucks on a pump. Um, so, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll leave this open for part two. Part two is going to be, like I said, the modification that I used 
to try to drop this temperature down. Uh, like I said, while it's idling, it's not going to drop. And I mean, we're up to 109. I think what it was like 80 something, like 84 when I started. So I started this video. Um, so that's going to be how I didn't solve it, but I helped it. So, all right. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe.